I don't know if you guys have seen this movie, Annie Hall, but uh, the Woody Allen movie. And in the beginning, young seven-year-old Woody Allen has just learned about entropy, and now he's refusing to do his homework because none of it matters. Uh, and it, it is played for laughs, but I, I certainly know people who, you know, they're fine now, but when they were kids or adolescents and they learned about uh, entropy or... Is that, is that the place where somebody says, Brooklyn is not expanding. expanding yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a problem. Eager, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, so I'm talking more about um, the the sort of dizzying realization that there there is no built-in meaning or set of values in the universe. That there's no. Uh, yeah, you want to have courage like, to fit to face that. Yeah, so I'm asking really about yes, that. Yeah, you're asking about that. You guys have always well, had the strength of it, I think But you know, I think like a lot of things, people pretend that they're they're driven by that meaning that someone else imposes on them. But ultimately, the meaning you give your, your own actions, for, even for the religious people, I think, matters more. Ultimately, and that's what we need to teach people, is that, is that you, the, the, the only meaning is the meaning you give it. And, and, and it becomes more precious when, when you choose what matters than when someone else chooses what matters for you. I, you know, it's the pleasure of growing up when you're a child, other people choose what matters for you. But the thrill of growing up is to choose for yourself. And, and a lot of people just haven't grown up yet. <laughs> <laughs> but that, you don't know if you, but that's the thrill of being alive, is not knowing if you chose right. If it, if it was if you knew it, it would be boring. You know, the possibility of making mistakes. And as a physicist, that, I, I do that professionally. And, uh, and, and it's uh, a lot of fun. There is, I suppose, there is a, a certain fear of the cold unknown. The, 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 in the universe, almost entirely empty. This is a little oasis of life. There may be others, but um, but I think that's exhilarating. I think I think the thought that you're looking out at a cold, dark, empty universe, and here we have this oasis of light and understanding and warmth, and and human affection and uh, all, all the things that make life worth living. And the, the purposes that, as Lawrence says, the purposes we make for, for ourselves. Um, it's, there's something false about taking comfort in the face of that from an illusion. Mm. And it, it's better to stand up tall and courageous and face the empty universe and make your own purposes. But, but Richard, when you, when, I know we've talked about this. Uh, you, it's not just empty. I mean, we get awe. With, we get awe, both of us, and I imagine most people in the audience, by looking up at the sky and seeing this vast, vast, not just emptiness, but it's full of amazing things. The Hubble Space Telescope pictures are universally loved because people are amazed by the stuff that's out there. And the fact that it's so immense, it indeed confirms their significance, but I think it breeds a kind of awe and spiritual wonder that's far as I often say, it's far preferable to the to the spirituality of religion because it's actually true. Yeah. <laughs> and it's big, it's not petty and yeah. small, yes. 